Hey, it's Tobog Rosie. I'm sitting here on the paddle cruiser of Featherbed and overlooking the beautiful Nisen estuary. And we're talking to Martin Hatchell. Martin, you're going to be talking to us at the Nisen Timber Festival about the aliens. Tell us a little bit more about it. Thanks, uh, Rosa. I'm, I'm going to be reprising the presentation that I first made to the Environmental Forum on the 7th of June on the uh, anniversary date of the Nisen fires. I was called back to Featherbed in uh, December last year to help with the rehabilitation of the reserve. Uh, originally it was uh, 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 Nisen Sands Fainbos actually, which is very uh, highly endangered biome, and uh, uh, Milkwood Forest. But over the years it had also become infested with recrons particularly and other um, alien vegetation. Uh, so much so, in fact, that uh, for instance the springs at Featherbed stopped running many years ago. Uh, and after the fires, which are obviously terrible, um, the, with the, the wiped out all the road crops, um, and uh, the, the springs have started to come back. The normal water uh, regime has started to take over, and that is because, the, first of all, the, the, the mature road crops was wiped out, and secondly, starting in, in February this year, we've been pulling out the road crops seedlings that have come up, and we are helping the vegetation to re-establish itself as natural nice and sounds animals. Fantastic. And Martin, we spoke a little earlier on about uh, new things you've discovered. Tell us a yeah. little bit about that. We'd known that there, that there were um, Stone Age sites there and, and after the fire, the recrons cleared away, I came across an early Stone Age tool site which we've had, uh, it's, been, it's been surveyed by the archaeologists working in this area. They reckon it's over 300,000 years old. Wow. And we've also discovered um, plants which we didn't know about before. Uh, many of the, uh, in, uh, the indigenous plants that um, wouldn't normally have grown there, but which are pioneer plants in this area, like keelworms. We've got a couple of colonies of keelworms growing there. I don't know where they come from. I've never seen keelworms at Featherbed before. And Nana Jaber discovered a plant which we may or may not be new to science. Uh, We've had it uh, sampled by uh, Johan Bart from Zampot, and he sent the samples off to the herbarium to be uh, positively identified one way or the other, We're hoping that it will be new to science. But that's the thing. It's been showing us and giving us these incredible re revelations, almost on a daily basis. Incredible. As a horticulturist, I mean, this nature must have surprised you in so many ways over the last year. Uh, so many ways every day. I mean, every single day when I go to Featherbed, it surprises me in some way or the other. There's something new to be seen. Uh, we have catalogued over 200 indigenous plants, species of indigenous plants, and I've got another list of about 60 plants, which I've got the photographs of, but I haven't uh, identified them yet, and we're working on that. They're not new to science, but uh, we've just got to work out what they are, find out what they are, and get them onto our catalogue. So that's two, two, nearly 300 plants um, just... In, in a year, and, and we haven't really properly got into spring. Wow. And also a little early on we were talking about, um, <clears throat> and I was asking you about uh, how long is it again, you, you made a point about how amazing nature is and how amazing it's coming back so yeah, quickly. Yeah, you asked how, how long the project of rehabilitation is going to take, and I think we have basically allowed it to do its rehabilitation. And the featherbed fame was, is absolutely stunning, it's magnificent as it is at the moment. The, into the future it's going to depend on good management but the thing is that we're constantly learning every day what that management is going to mean so it's an evolving project and it's a, a kind of a moving target it, it, but it's it's fascinating from that point of view wow. for that reason it's all about biodiversity right? and and featherbed has always been unique because we biodiversity is is, is the big attraction there and now after the fires I think that the biodiversity is even more uh, sort of in your face because it's so easy to see how many hundreds of different types of plants living together uh, in, in, in such a small area. Yeah. It's incredible. It really is. So you're going to be informing us a little bit more about featherbed and the process of living? Featherbed and the process. Uh, I'm going to start with why. Why do we remove aliens? Okay. I'm going to talk about the process that we've been, processes that we've been through, the help that we've had from other people and the plans that we've come up with ourselves and how we've resolved the problems that we've um, come across on that very unique piece of land. Excellent. And you will be talking to us on the Saturday. Yeah, Saturday of the, of the United September Festival 2018. I think it's at 11 o'clock in the morning. 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Excellent.
Martin, thank you so much for your time. I'm really looking forward to your chat and what you have. I know you've got vast amount of information there in that head of yours, and you're going to be sharing with us, and it's absolutely great. Keep going, Rose. It'll just swell. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day.